Hello, I'm Alex from Barefaced Audio, and this is our new 310, which comes with a grill if you buy one, but we've left it off so you can see what's going on there. So, it's three of our Epic 10CR drivers. We've had them manufactured in an alternate impedance to solve the impedance puzzle, because otherwise the impedance would be annoyingly low if all parallel, or annoyingly high if all series. Um, that isn't always possible, but took some work, some juggling, and yes, we have an alternate impedance, 10CR250, which maintains the exact same tone and sonic performance, so efficiency, power handling, ability to move air, so that's Xmax times SD, volume displacement. So here it is. It's an epic piece of kit, and this is the driver that justifies the fact we make a 3x10 cab, because if you think of most 10 inch bass guitar drivers, one of them on its own is feeble, two of them is all right, four of them gives you a really nice amount of output that it just works in many contexts in terms of efficiency, power handling and ability to turn that into moving air, generating mid-range punch, generating treble clarity and spreading that around the room. Well. Most 410s don't spread it around the room very well, but that's a, a different video. But our 10CR250, in terms of ability to move air, it's more comparable to a decent 15 or a very good 12. Let's not compare it to our 12, because our 12 is insane, as you may have noticed in some videos or if you've used them yourself or heard it, any reviews or anecdotal evidence. But yeah, our 12's in a mad mad place, but our 12XN is not there for those of you who want a 12 inch sound. It's not for those of you who want a deeper, bigger sound than the 10 or a more mellow sound than the 10. It's there for those of you who want hyper accurate reproduction of what's going into it. So whether it's a perfectly clean bass through a, a clean preamp and a clean amp, or whether you're putting lots of gnarly dirt in, even overdriving a, an all valve amp into it, the 12XN will reproduce that with as much accuracy as is possible. The 10CR maintains the excellent dispersion that we get from the 12XN. It has not as great air moving abilities, but it moves a lot of air, not as great power handling, but it handles a lot of power. And it does something nice to your tone in terms of warmth and fatness. So I've put some stats over here. Zoom in so you can read my scribbles. The drumsticks are all the way over there, otherwise I'd use one as a pointer. But, bareface, 310. So we've got 100 dB sensitivity, so that, this is a very sensitive cab. Sensitive is efficient. You'll see other companies quote higher sensitivity than that for a cab this size. If they're doing that, they're probably making it up. You can't really get more efficiency out of a base cab with decent lows that's this small. It's just, it's just not possible. So 100 dB sensitivity is a lot. 750 watts of power handling if you're chucking anything at it. as gnarly, fuzzy, compressed, uh, going deep, whatever you want, that's fine. I mean, obviously if you do, it's always possible to blow a driver if you do something stupid enough but it's really hard to blow our drivers. We get very few blown drivers. Um, I, and I don't think our customers are any less stupid in the situation. I mean, I've done it. I've the, One of the reasons the company started was I had completely ruined some base cabs by putting tons of power and effects through them. So yes, I am, yes. 900 watts into each two by 10. Yeah, 1800 watts my base rig was. Yeah, come on. And it wasn't a very big rig, but um, yeah, that, that was stupid. If you're running clean sounds into them, so, you know, a bit of overdrive, stuff like that, fine with up to 1200 watts. I would say if you go with more power than that, you're increasing the chance of blowing stuff up and you're not really getting anything extra output. So 1200 watts is fine if you want clean headroom. The speakers will tell you if you're pushing them too hard, if you're running clean sounds. If you're running dirty sounds, you might not be able to tell the sound of them complaining apart from the rest of your dirt. It might just sound really cool. They do go, our 12XNs 
as you crank them harder, they stay clean, 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 clean. You know, really, they'll go louder and louder, and then they go gnarly in a not very nice way. That's when they overload. It's it's pretty obvious. It's not like digital clipping, but it's 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 not nice. Our ten CRs push them harder. They start to growl, and then they start to grind, and then they start to roar. Yeah. They get really thunderous, they actually get a bit darker when you push them really hard, but you do have to go really hard to do that. You'll be annoyingly loud in most situations with a 310. It's quite fun overdriving the 110, um, 210. Yeah, 310, I think you might be able to get into that realm if you want to push it hard. In terms of weight, it's light. It's not the lightest cab in the world, because we don't aim to make the lightest cabs in the world. We aim to make the best cabs in the world, which happen to be light. Um, the lightness is why a lot of people buy them, but I don't believe people would love them like they do if they didn't sound great. So we're making stuff that sounds as good as possible to hell with the weight, and then as durable and robust as possible, and then we keep the weight light considering that, because we want these cabs to outlast us, outlast your gigging life. Just keep going, put, you know, move them on send them around, stop generating landfill and make quality stuff. So here's this cab. I shall just show you a bit more of it. As you can see, it's Tolexed. You can, because it's Tolexed, you can have it in many colors, unlike our 12XN cabs, which can be had in any color as long as it's black. As an aside, the early Model T Fords, which were any color as long as they're black, weren't black. They were always very dark green or very dark blue. It's not a ported cab, it's not a sealed cab, it's a hybrid resonator cab. So there's the outlets for the hybrid resonator. It's a dual tuned aperiodic cab. It's a bit like a sealed cab that's been designed to have more efficiency and thus lose low frequency response and then get the low frequency response back through the hybrid resonator. It actually goes deeper and fatter than most sealed cabs, but it has that similar feel in the lows in terms of the response and the roll off. Um, yeah, fat, warm, toe, that's what I was saying, clear. Yeah, this is the thing. Although it's coloured, and to me when we first designed the 10CR speaker, I was thinking of it as quite a, a retro sounding speaker. But that really was just in comparison to what our other cabs sounded like. And then the reality sort of dawned on me as more people used it. It wasn't that retro sounding. It just had this fancy, it had this warmth, it had this nice colour. And it still responded to what you were doing with it. So if you changed what your fingers were doing on your bass, or if you changed your EQ, you know, you could hear that behaviour. So I'm going to give it a quick whirl. What I shall do, we're just using the mic on the camera for this, so we'll come down here and twiddle so the mic isn't quite so far off axis. There it is, lurking down there. That's a Super Twin. Next to it, you can see they're the same height and width. Super Twins for actually deeper front to back and obviously the grill's different because it's a ported cab and there's a, a dual big baby three stack next to it. So it's quite a diddy cab, here we are scale and uh, Stingray with well, quite old strings now but it's yeah So that was with the tweeter all the way off. Let's 
crank the tweeter. That's with the tweeter up. So that's a little bit of finger style and slap on the stingray. I'll just demo quickly what happens if I, let's say I'm playing an open string and I'll just move, let's take the tweeter off again. And let's just sit, see if I can do what's some one handed playing. So let's try that moving the uh, mid up and down. Try on this lower string. Let's try some highs up and down. Oh, my hands sounded strange, didn't it? So you can hear that the moving the EQ changes the sound, obviously moving your hand changes the sound plenty. So it's responsive, but it's got this it's warmth to it. Give it a little bit of dirt. Got my massive pedal board down here. So this is a little bit of overdrive. Is that really a little bit of overdrive? No. Got distortion on as well. So clean. To, from clean to distortion. Sorry, hit the envelope. And that's with the tweeter off, so you can hear the sort of top end it's got. That is quite a gnarly distortion. Let's try a, a darker, mellower distortion. Let's try this one. Yeah, so clean. overdrive into the distortion or is this distortion to overdrive no this is distortion to overdrive I don't know that'll work let's try the other way around da -da 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 -da. distortion so this is overdrive into that bright distortion let's take them off it's quite gnarly let's try a bit of fuzz how about this thick fuzz Yeah. 
So hopefully you can hear that it's, it's a responsive cab, but it has an inherent warmth and fatness to it. Ooh, buzz and chords. Maybe not. And then, but it does do chords quite nicely. Let's see. Sorry, I'm a bit rusty. I've been playing a guitar a bit recently and I've been trying to get the hang of walking bass, which is something that's never clicked with me. And that's, I've been attacking an acoustic bass with like a duster under the strings and the action up and smacking it here to make it sound like a double bass. But um, you'll get rusty at your other things. There aren't enough hours in the day to all th do all the things I want and need to do, unfortunately. So that down there, that's the 310. We have more videos to come demoing this. I'm going to get Tall Man, one of our Jameses, our tool two Jameses, to uh, help me out as he is an excellent bassist and wields a pick more often than me. And yeah, he's just got a plain bass and I think it'll be fun. We can switch between some of the cabs and let you hear some different stuff. Yeah, we're pleased with that. Sorry it's taken so long. We we. Finally decided we should do this, oh god, about two years ago. It took a long time to get the drivers sorted. Um, anyway, they're here now. The cab's done. It's epic. You can have it as standard, it's black Tolex. You can have it with black cloth, like that little compact that's lurking down there. You can have it with silver cloth, like the Super Twin It's there. Or you can have it with black steel and, of course, coloured baffles. Uh, that's a grey baffle, which is a bit boring. Don't know why I did that. Shocking pink, maybe next. Could repaint them. But um, yeah, let us know what you'd like to hear of it. We have a wall of basses here, here, here. Guitars. Where's the basses? You need to zoom out. Oh, there's some basses. Yeah, so we can do more demos for you. So yes, we'll be back. See you next time.